Hi everybody, welcome to the Headwater Science Center live stream. Before we get started, just wanted to let you know we're open seven days a week. Uh, Monday through Saturday, we're open 9.30 to 5. And on Sundays, we're open uh, 1.30, 1 to 5? 1 to 5. Um, so today we're going to talk about kind of a fun animal. My dad and I used to laugh about these all the time. Uh, this is terror birds. So terror birds are a group of birds from the Pleistocene. Uh, and kind of a cool thing about them is they're one of the first large predators to evolve after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs. Uh, they evolved 62 million years ago. <laughs> and they were around all the way up until about 1.8 million years ago. Um, one of my friends uh, and I were talking about these also recently, and he wanted me to mention on this live stream, kind of a cool thing about these birds is that they would eat horses. Now, these weren't the horses you and I would picture, so this is probably around 62 to 50 million years ago. Horses were, their ancestors were quite small, but their natural predators were these large, flightless, carnivorous birds. So, these things ranged anywhere from about 3 feet to almost 13 feet tall. Uh, it's hard to estimate weights on them due to like incomplete skeletons and also birds and flightless birds in particular being kind of all over the place. And we don't always have enough of the skeletons to make good estimates. Uh, a lot of these evolved in South America and they were mostly found in South America throughout most of the Pleistocene. Although around 2.6 million years ago, some of these actually migrated to North America. And a little bit sooner for some of them, they were able to swim across the ever-shrinking gap between North and South America. And these are some of the animals, if you remember the giant sloth live stream, we talked about the Great American Biotic Interchange. These were one of those success stories from animals of South America moving North. Uh, Titanus walleri is the one I've drawn here. Uh, it actually was found in Florida, not just South America which uh, Florida needed anything else to be kind of terrifying. Uh, so these were carnivorous, though. We do know from the beaks compared to modern bird beaks, uh, they have the sharpened edge and that hooked bill that a lot of carnivorous birds today have. Although, kind of a cool thing, they're not related to modern flightless birds. And we'll get into who they're related to in a little bit. And another kind of fun thing about these is they, like many birds, produced pellets. We tend to think of pellets as a thing that pretty much just owls. And I think the reason we all think of owl pellets is we've all dissected, or probably will dissect, an owl pellet at some point. And they seem to always eat some pretty interesting stuff, which yields pretty fun pellets. So, let me hold up. Angie was able to show me that we had some owl pellets in the basement. And some of the stuff you'll see is stuff like this bird skull. So pellets are basically collections of material that the animal can't digest. So it'll be stuff like hair, bone, and other things that they essentially regurgitate um, to get it out. Uh, you'd rather not pass a bird's skull through the other way. Um, and actually more birds than you think do pellets. Everything from grebes to crows um, herons, cormorants, even like little songbirds like chickadees. Uh, most birds, like even, even gulls and terns, eat stuff that has some things that they can't quite digest as part of the thing, so they gotta, they gotta regurgitate it. So back on terror birds. So generally with these, uh, these would also be called forest rockets, and there are five families of them. So we have the Brontothurine, again, my Latin is terrible. I am very sure my ornithology professor, if, if she's watching, is incredibly disappointed in me. We have, oh, okay, we're not even gonna try that one. We're just gonna point at it. <laughs> we have Patagonotherine, Horus Rockinae, which is where the whole group gets the name, and Silla. Charity? Also, one of my friends took Latin in high school, and she's probably laughing at me. <laughs> so with these birds, they have a few really unique traits. Their skulls are heavily fused, which means there's not a lot of separate bones, uh, which gives the skull a lot of sturdiness. 
which they needed because their necks were heavily muscled and they probably when they bit their prey basically swung their necks essentially down at something with a lot of force so it would pay to have a very durable head uh the other thing about them is their beaks were actually just through weight heavy uh which also assisted in their method of killing their prey and they had these very long muscular legs which are great for running after something that doesn't want to get caught so these are probably pretty good running predators um the other kind of interesting thing about them is we're not entirely sure why they went extinct um given that titanus was able to move into north america and do reasonably well it's not entirely clear whether it was competition from mammal predators um or some other factor it's been hypothesized that given that these are large egg-laying animals that those eggs would have been vulnerable to stuff like uh, rats and things that they didn't have in South America. Which, when that becomes a problem, they move into North America, and when those animals from North America move into South America, it can cause problems for animals like this. It often causes problems for birds on islands. You'll often hear New Zealand talk about the fact that rats are like a menace to their flightless birds because those birds nest on the ground where their nests are totally exposed, and it's very likely these birds did too. And then there could be other factors that we just don't know yet, that we haven't connected to this yet. But they did go extinct 1.8 million years ago, meaning we didn't see these. Out of all these prehistoric animals from the Ice Age, this is the first one where thankfully nobody had to deal with this situation. Because that'd be kind of terrifying if you're just walking around and suddenly like a 13-foot bird rolled up and decided you looked tasty. Um, the other thing about them is evolving in isolation for a long time led to this unique body plan. Um, there was an opening for a large terrestrial predator, and given that there weren't a lot of mammals to fill that, they lived alongside stuff like sporacidonts, which we will cover. Um... But other than that, these were the animals that filled that terrestrial carnivore niche. Uh, one of the hypotheses for the South American terror birds going extinct is actually a North American animal moving into South America. And it's one we've covered before. It's actually one of my earliest prehistoric animal live streams, and that was the saber-toothed cats, specifically Smilodon as well. Around the time that these guys show up in South America is also around the time the terror bird fossils get a little bit thinner on the ground. And these were also another efficient terrestrial predator that were really good at going after large prey. So that's direct competition for the birds who may have had other factors that could have limited their ability to hunt. And the saber-toothed cats lasted a little bit longer than them. Uh, great thing is we actually did run into these a bit. So another good question about terror birds is what are their modern relatives if it's not stuff like emus, ostriches, and cassowaries? They're kind of birds that I wasn't expecting. I had to do a little bit of research for this. Uh, so they are birds that we call cariema forms. So that would be stuff like seriemas, which are a South American bird that is mostly treasure but can still fly. And of all things, falcons, uh, passerines, which everyone would recognize as songbirds, like sparrows and stuff. And Pacifica forms, which I covered on, I think, my second live stream here, which are parrots. Um, which is kind of interesting. Parrots are very different birds. I was going to try to get our parrot Angel on the live stream today, but she sort of vetoed that. Um, but they have very different skull anatomy. Um, anyone who's come in here and talked about parrots with me, uh, one of the things I love about parrots is their beaks are very unique for not really being heavily fused to the skull and being kind of on more of a hinge. Kind of the opposite of these, which is like everything that can be fused together on the skull is fused together because it needs to be able to stand a lot of just force. But it is kind of cool. Birds are a very diverse group of animals. Um, I think they're the most numerous land vertebrate with like... 6,000 species or something? It's something ridiculous. And birds have or do just about everything ecologically. Uh, today, we tend to think of birds as mostly flying in the air and sticking to small prey, but clearly they have done a lot. They've been 
things that were kind of a menace to stuff, to large mammals, even. Um, another thing I, I want to point out, uh, you might notice with the two drawings, the neck looks a little bit different on both of them. So these are supposed to be the same species, but a thing with birds that's kind of fun that um, a few people have pointed out to me is that birds have a lot of vertebrae in their neck, and their necks also are very flexible, and they tend to not fully extend it often. Uh, but for stuff like ostriches and stuff, when they run, they do tend to kind of have their neck a little bit. And I have seen emus up close, and emus... I've definitely seen do this posture with their necks, where it's just kind of running out. And I thought it was good to show that uh, if you look at stuff like, um, what's a good modern bird? Like the green heron is a great one. If you look at pictures of the green heron, they often look like they have almost no neck or they're almost entirely neck. And it's just kind of a fun thing that I like to do when I do these drawings is I'm mostly trying to have fun and get people to look at these animals as animals. They're not monsters. They're not weird movie creatures. They are real animals. They just aren't around anymore. Uh, so another thing, just back on the pellets, though, I just remember to have the giant model. This is probably still a little bit big for the terror bird pellet, but the stuff that is in it is actually probably close to what you would find in a terror bird pellet. Uh, so we got fur, kind of the heavier bones in the leg. If they were still around today, they probably would be going for uh, your pets. So this is a Dog or a cat collar. Hold on, right another bird's foot. Skunk. Bug. And uh, if you don't run fast <laughs> enough, stuff will catch. But yeah, uh, do you have any questions about these animals by any chance? We have a little bit of a live audience. <laughs> yeah. But overall, so overall though, these are one of my favorite prehistoric animals just because of how kind of weird they are by comparison. We don't really have any modern flightless carnivorous birds. Um, I wouldn't rule out ever happening again in the future of life because things do tend to get a little bit weird. Um, well, uh, thank you for tuning in, and I'll be picking up on these prehistoric animal live streams a little bit more regularly now.